Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, today we're going to start the process of uh, marrying the frame back onto the engine. But the first thing I want to do in this video is install the valve cover. Because like I had mentioned before, the valve cover really should be installed permanently before we put the frame on. It just makes it a lot easier uh, to access and it's a lot less hassle putting the valve cover on which you'll see uh, as we go. So as you can see here I've got the valve cover here ready to install the uh, the gasket, the rubber gasket. And by the way I use um, an actual Honda gasket on this. There are a lot of reproductions out there that are a lot less money but I just don't trust the, the quality of the rubber on the aftermarket ones. I still think the Honda uh, gasket is the best and you lessen the chance of it leaking. One thing I want to go over before I get started on that is uh, here in the next, over the next few days, I'm going to be releasing one video after another. Uh, because there are many different steps in installing, uh, you know, re-marrying uh, the frame to the engine. Uh, one of them, and it's really important, is that you get the front, front end, the, the steering stem, the triple tree, and the front forks uh, rebuilt and uh, reassembled, because once the frame is connected back onto the engine again, uh, the front fork assembly is what supports the front of the engine. And it's just a lot easier to be able to uh, lower it down onto the forks uh, rather than having jack stands and everything else that can, you know, slip out from under it. And <laughs> I won't even talk about the results of that. But anyway, uh, I want to do a separate video on rebuilding the uh, the steering stem, um, adding the new bearings, which I have here, uh, the new fork seals, and so on. So that's going to be one video dedicated to that. Then I'm going to do another video on just installing the motor mounts, which I have here. They're all ready to go. And... Uh, you know, I've, I've already gone through the frame and um, cleaned out all of the, uh, the threads, cleaned, cleaned the, uh, the bolts, you know, run a tap and die set on the bolt threads as well as the threads in the frame. I think that's a really important step. And uh, then I will also do a separate video on rebuilding the alternator, because once we get the frame uh, attach back onto the engine and the front end back together again. Then I'll go ahead and, and rebuild the alternator and reinstall the uh, clutch cover permanently and so on. So that's going to be over the next few days. I'm going to be releasing multiple videos on all of this. The other items that I'm going to be covering in the upcoming videos are uh, the rest of the, uh, the uh, engine cases and um, covers and so on. Uh, part of it is the uh, swing arm and the center stand uh, assemblies and installation, uh, the brake pedal, um, you know, and a lot of the other engine covers and so on. So I'll be, I'll be cleaning these up and polishing them accordingly and getting them ready uh, to install. And again, I'll have a, uh, that'll be included here in the upcoming videos. So the first thing that I do is uh, I pull the, um, the gasket out and I just kind of lay it along the edge there. And as some of you may know, there's a, uh, there's a slot at the bottom of the valve cover, a trough or a ridge, whatever you want to call it there. And the gasket uh, is designed so that it inserts into that, into that ridge. 
And so I go ahead and get the gasket all laid out because, because of how long this gasket is, you know, it's a little cumbersome to work with. So now Honda, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some kind of a dark brown stain all the way around here. And what Honda did at the factory was they actually glued the gasket to the valve cover. And I just use, believe it or not, it's made by Honda. And I use hand grip cement because it says that it's adhesive for, uh, formulated exclusively for Honda rubber parts and so on. So um, I don't have any of the uh, gasket uh, adhesive that Honda also has, but I use this hand grip cement and it works great. You don't really need to use any kind of gasket material, uh, gasket, um, you know, uh, sealer or anything like that because the rubber does the job just fine. So what I do is, see, I put a little bit here at this point here, and it's it's pretty tight there. All you really want to do is when you lift the valve cover and turn it upside down, you don't want that gasket to fall off the valve cover. You want it to stay put exactly the way it's laid out here. And then that way when you lay it down on onto the engine, you know, this sealing surface right here uh, is what, you know, seals the, the oil around the, the valve cover. So I just take the hand grip gasket and I, I start at these ends here and then like right here I'll do it along there and sometimes I use a uh, just a screwdriver or a pick or you know whatever you have and I just kind of spread it around in there and again you don't need much And when you look at the stains all the way around here, you can see where when they put it on at the factory, it actually dripped down onto the cover. And so, you know, they were probably pretty sloppy about it, but um, I'm a little more careful about that because I really don't want any of that material to get caught up into the valve train or anything like that. So, um, but anyway, I just kind of pick strategic areas all the way around just so that the thing stays put when you go to install the valve cover.
Okay, so that's it. I've got it all glued down all the way around and I just use strategic points. So I use this area here and here in the front and the rear of the valve cover. I go around these edges here and then uh, for sure at the at at all four ends here because that's the heaviest part there and uh, so anyway you just kind of let that sit for a few minutes while you prepare the rest of the engine uh, rest of the bolts and everything to install so talking about that now you take the the special bolts that hold the valve cover and the and the rubber grommets and you have to install them and they can be a little tough so sometimes I put them in in uh, boiling water which is probably what I'm going to do in this case so then while you're waiting for the uh, the gasket um, to dry uh, you'll want to take a clean paper towel and spray it with carburetor cleaner and then just go around and make sure that the mating surface for the gasket all the way around the engine is nice and clean and free of any oil at all. Uh, it just has a better seal that way. You know, oil seems or tends to kind of seep out while you're moving the engine around and so on. So you just want to go around and make sure all those surfaces are are clean and dry of any oil. So then once the adhesive has dried on the valve cover gasket, as you can see here, I can hold the valve cover upside down and the, and the uh, gasket stays put. So then you just carefully lower it down, make sure everything lines up. Make sure the holes are all centered and lined up. and then it's ready to install the valve cover bolts. So I went ahead and put the, uh, the rubber grommets in boiling water and I'm just pulling them out of the, uh, the pan right now and they're really hot and very flexible now so they easily go on. As you can see there, they slip right on because they're, they're hot and much softer than they were before. So once you get all of the grommets on the bolts and get the bolts all cleaned up and polished and shined up, then go ahead and start installing them and just start them by hand some guys use uh, cordless uh, screwdrivers and so on and I just don't think it's a good idea when you're talking about aluminum threads they should all all uh, nuts and bolts and everything should be started by hand first to make sure that you're not cross threading because you do not want to cross thread anything on this head. And just screw them down by hand as far as you can, making sure that the valve cover is still lined up properly.
Then take a socket wrench and just turn them until you feel a little bit of resistance and do this in a cross pattern, sort of like what I'm doing here. Just kind of make sure you do it in a cross pattern so you don't warp the uh, valve cover. So now you torque down the bolts according to the shop manual, which says that the torque specs on these is 6 to 9 pounds. So I, I have mine set at about 8 pounds, 7.5 or 8 pounds. And again, you, you start off by going in a cross pattern. And eight pounds isn't very much, so it does. It's not going to take much, but with new grommets and a new gasket and everything, it may take a little more than normal. But uh, again, it's you just have to be. You just have to give it a light turn in a cross pattern until you feel that click. That's going to do it for this video, but like I had mentioned before, I'm going to be uploading a couple of more videos here over the next couple of days. And um, uh, now that we have the valve cover uh, permanently installed, we can move forward. So the very next video I'm going to upload tomorrow is going to be the restoration of the steering stem and the triple clamp and install the new uh, head bearings. And um, as usual, thank you so much for watching and please uh, like, share and subscribe and, um, and also hit the bell for future uh, notifications.